Hello dear students, welcome back to SJ's classes. We had been discussing the paper Literary Criticism in the previous video lessons. We have so far covered the first two modules of the textbook English Literary Criticism and Theory and Introductory History by M.S. Nagarajan. We spoke about the classical critics like Plato, Aristotle, Horace, Longinus. We also went through the medieval and renaissance literary criticism. We also discussed Sir Philip Sidney as a literary critic. Now it's time to move on to our third module. The third module is titled English Neoclassical Criticism. And the first literary critic that you are going to confront in this particular module is John Dryden. Let us look at John Dryden as a literary critic. In this video, I will not be elaborating on John Dryden as a poet or as a playwright, but rather I will be looking at him as a literary critic. I will definitely talk about some of his important literary outputs, but we will focus more on his output as a literary critic. Let us have a brief introduction to John Dryden. Dryden was born on August 9, 1631 in Northamptonshire, England and died on May 1, 1700 in London. He was an English poet, dramatist and literary critic who so dominated the literary scene of his day that it came to be known as the Age of Dryden. It may be taken to mean that during the period from Dryden to the end of the 18th century, under the influence of Dryden, the criticism of arts in general and poetry in particular attained the status of an important sphere of human activity worthy of practice by the best minds. And that is probably why that age, that period is called as Age of Dryden. Let us look at some of his most valuable contributions towards English literature. After John Donne and John Milton, John Dryden was the greatest English poet of the 17th century. After William Shakespeare and Ben Jonson, he was the greatest playwright and he has no peer as a writer of prose, especially of literary criticism and as a translator. Now these are some of his works. After Shakespeare, he wrote the greatest heroic play of the century, The Conquest of Grenada, and the greatest tragic comedy, Marriage et la Mode. He also wrote the greatest tragedy of the Restoration, All for Love, the greatest tragic comedy, Don Sebastian, and one of the greatest comedies, Amphitryon. And Dryden is also popular as a poet. He is best known today as a satirist. I hope you remember or you have come across uh, his works against Thomas Shadwell, especially MacFlecknow and The Medal. His most famous poem, Absalom and Achitophel, contains several brilliant satiric portraits. But unlike satire, it comes to a final tragic resolution. John Dryden is not basically a satirist. He has written many other poems as well. Some of his great poems are Annus Mirabilis, Religio Lysi, The Hind and the Panther, and Kiligru, Alexander's Feast, and To My Honored Kinsman. And it's important to note that these are not satires. He also excelled as a translator. As a translator, he developed an easy manner of what he called paraphrase that produced brilliant versions of Homer, Lucretius, Horace, Ovid, Juvenal, Perseus, Giovanni, Boccaccio, Geoffrey Chaucer, and above all, Virgil. His translation of the Aeneid remains the best ever produced in English. Now let us look at Dryden as a literary critic. Johnson's famous remark that Dryden was the first writer who taught us the principles for determining the merit of a literary composition is pregnant with 
meaning and perhaps that is exactly why dr samuel johnson addressed him as the father of english criticism t s eliot echoed the same sentiment when he said that dryden was positively the first master of english criticism so look at the praise is being showered there by two popular literary figures dr samuel johnson and t s eliot dr samuel johnson calls him as the father of english criticism and t s eliot addresses him as the first master of english criticism and there are reasons why they have made these statements john dryden was the pioneer the first practitioner of comparison and analysis in the history of criticism and that is what you refer to as comparative criticism and analytical criticism in english literature and he pioneered it and therefore it is not an exaggeration to say that english criticism evolved from dryden essentially dryden was a prefatory man mean it means he uh, mostly wrote prefaces to his works prefaces are introduction to a particular uh, work much of his criticism is found in his prefaces this is the starting point for criticism in the case of dryden for justifying his own works he had to indulge in an analysis of his own which can be called self criticism so it is with his prefaces that he began his uh, critical analysis and dryden uses the term examen it was uh, earlier used by the french playwright corneille so dryden uses the term examen for critical analysis the term examen means uh, a critical study now let, let us look at some of the important contributions that he has made towards uh, english literary criticism dryden wrote his earliest critical essay in 1664 a dedicatory epistle to his first play the rival ladies so as i said earlier he began his literary criticism with uh, prefaces until the date of his death in 1700 not a year passed without his writing some criticism either in the form of a preface or an essay or a discourse the most relevant works of dryden which are of a theoretical nature are defense of an essay of dramatic poesy a parallel of poetry and painting preface to fables ancient and modern and the most important and widely anthologized piece an essay of dramatic poesy and that is the particular work which has been elaborated in your textbook as i have uh, hinted uh, earlier uh, you learn a critic as well as one of his representative work with respect to dryden you will be learning an essay of dramatic poesy an essay of dramatic poesy is the only work of criticism that dryden published as a separate work and it is also be to, to be noted that he revised it thrice and published it thrice during his lifetime an essay of dramatic poesy is acknowledged as one of the classics of literary theory he presents to us a variety of views different from one another but not in any sense antithetical or opposite to one another let us look in detail his work and essay of dramatic poesy as i said earlier he presents a variety of views in this particular or through this particular work Now, all these views are true and legitimate on their own terms it consists of long discussions and explanations of critical stands taken by the four characters or you may call them interlocutors who engage themselves in a literary debate so this is what we come across as we read the work an essay of dramatic poesy you come across four characters who are actually debating and these four characters represent a particular notion on the occasion of a naval victory of the english over the dutch there is an exchange among the four interlocutors going on a boat expedition and they discuss four themes or the work 
as such discusses four themes. Are the modern poets as good as the ancients? Are the contemporaries as good as the Elizabethans? Are the English as good as the French? Of the two, which is the tight choice for a drama, rhyme or blank verse? So these are the four issues which the work discusses. Modern poets and the ancients, uh, Elizabethans and the French, English and the French, Elizabethans and the contemporary writers, and finally, uh, rhyme verse, rhyme or blank verse. These are the issues that Dryden discusses through his work and essay of dramatic poesy. As such, it could be said that of dramatic poesy deals with the major issues in drama such as the ancients versus the moderns, the French versus the English, blank verse versus heroic verse. And the dialogue form which he has used to compose this work assures an impartial inquiry. Everybody gets to say his side. That is what happens in Dryden's this critical piece. In his note, he makes it clear that his purpose was to vindicate the honor of the English writers from the censure of those who unjustly preferred the French before him. Hence, his defense of the English dramatic tradition and his justification for his use of rhyme in his tragedies forms the clinching section of his argument. Let us look at the four characters who appear in this particular work. You have Neander, Crites, Lysidius, Eugenius. These are the four characters who discusses various notions in this particular work. And once you read, you understand that only Neander's views are Dryden's. And he speaks for the greater part. Besides possessing the advantage of being the last speaker who has the last word. Crites is the spokesman for neoclassicism. Neander represents Aristotelian tradition. Lysidius is empirical and Eugenius the least strict in his views among the four. So these are the four characters that you or interlocutors who whom you come across as you read an essay of dramatic poesy. Dryden presents the different viewpoints with absolute honesty and integrity without attacking or being partial to any side. That is an important point as far as his work is concerned. He is not biased, he is not partial and he makes sure that everybody gets a chance to make his point. He presents various points of view in a balanced manner without refuting any or holding on obstinately to any other. So you, so you see a flexible Dryden over there. Dryden's ultimate belief in literature being a mimetic art is mostly clear, most clearly expressed in his famous definition of the play. So you also come across a definition of play given by Dryden in this work. He defines it as a just and lively image of human nature representing its passions and humors and the changes of fortune to which it is subject for the delight and instruction of mankind. So the final phrase is important for the delight and instruction of mankind. It's for entertainment. It's also for enlightenment. So you can use a play for both these ends. And all the four participants in an essay of dramatic poesy accept this as the broad based definition of drama. Uh, it's not just remarks on drama that you come across through this particular work. You also come across uh, his comments on Ben Jonson as well as Chaucer. Let us look at the comments he made on Ben Jonson. On Ben Jonson, Dryden's observation is most telling. He says, if I would compare him with Shakespeare, I must acknowledge him the more correct poet but Shakespeare the greater wit. Shakespeare was the Homer or father of our dramatic poets. Johnson was the Virgil in the pattern of elaborate writing. I admire him but I love Shakespeare. So this is his comment on Ben Johnson. 
let's look at what he has said regarding Chaucer. Dryden says that Chaucer is the father of English poetry. He is a perpetual fountain of good sense. He holds him in the same degree of veneration as the Grecians held Homer or the Romans Virgil. He also comments upon the three unities in this work. He upholds the three unities on rational and psychological grounds. He states that the unities contribute to verisimilitude. The observance of unities adds to the credibility of the plot. So it is not just a discussion between uh, the four characters that you find in this particular work. You also ha have uh, Dryden commenting upon some of the popular writers before him like Ben Jonson and Chaucer. With this we come to the end of this particular video lesson. I hope you have a uh, very brief idea regarding who uh, John Dryden is, what are his important contributions towards English literature as well as English literary criticism and also an idea on his most popular work An Essay of Dramatic Poesy. I'll see you in the next video lesson. In the next video lesson, I will be discussing Alexander Pope. Thank you so much for watching.